what is up folders here we have the partial pre-crease tutorial for Arasawa Yuga's Dragon from 2007 now this is the crease pattern which he has posted on his Twitter I will link in the description if you want to go and download it uh, make sure to do that there is a few extra crease patterns which I'll show in just a moment thanks to my friend Toya and fellow folders in the SS Origami group on WhatsApp. He did a basic guide to pre-creasing this and they also provided extra crease patterns. So it makes things a lot easier. So I'll have them, I'll show you in a second. And Toya, if, if you want me to advertise your group, then let me know. I know you that you watch my videos a few times, so if you want to, let me know and I will uh, advertise it for you. So it is, I believe they all speak Spanish, you know. I don't think I've seen an English comment, even though I'm in it. But I can do that for you if you want. So that is the basic crease pattern. And the references. Now, let's see what should I show first. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure um, what the differences are because they have these parts and then not on this side. I know it's a symmetrical model, so I'm not sure uh, what these make instead, or what these do, or what the different sides are for in terms of like, collapsing and shaping but if you know then let me know in the comments anyone I really don't know so let's put that aside now, I believe this is the full crease pattern which I flipped and mirrored this side to this side because there is a picture of like a basically someone drawn a diagram with the dragon head I'll put it on the screen now and then this is the crease pattern at the top right or just under that picture so I'm going to assume that this is the full crease pattern to which you would pre-crease and collapse and then we also have we have again I'm not too sure if this is an actual shaping one or if this is correct I'm going to assume it is we have the plates for the wings and so on um, yeah and also the head some head details as well. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that is. I thought I didn't have the head details, but it's actually on there, so that is fine. Right. So we're going to just use this for pre-creasing. Now, if you look at this, we have a bunch of lines. Uh, I'll read what they say. Black. These last line here connect to circle points here to here. Purple angle bisector of black circled point. The light blue opposite fold of black across the blue. And then blue fold the top left corner to the top black circle. Now, if you look at the creases and the these lines, what you can do is uh, do find ones that you can't make right away. For instance, this one here this one because we don't know where this point is or this point or we don't really know where this one is because we don't know where this one is and then the same with this one but what we can do is we can make this one we have the angle bisector and then the bisector of that angle so we're going to do that so I've already made the diagonal And then we're just going to fold by six. Now again, because this is a partial pre-crease tutorial, I'm not going to show you every single crease, but I will show you all the major creases that you can then use to finish off the pre-creasing yourself. It's a really good way of practicing to pre-crease or collapse. I'm trying not to screw this up. So like that, and then I'll also show a colour on, on the crease pattern as well to show what creases we have made. So I will, every time I make a crease, I'll mark it on this, mark it on this, and then I'll show you just on screen in case you want to pause the video to make sure you're doing it correct. Now we are just going to bisect the angle again. 
making this crease here. We have made this and then on the crease pattern. Now if we go back to the references, we have made this one and this one. Now if you notice where this one hits the edge, we have a 90 degree crease going straight across all the way and it also goes through this crease here which also makes up this one. So we know it's right. So we can make a 90 degree crease from this point straight across. And again, starting from the bottom part. Ah, there it is. When you do this, uh, make sure, I forgot to say this at the start, when you do this, make sure your paper is perfectly square. You want this to be as neat as possible. This is one of those crease patterns that you really need to be precise when folding to make things much easier when you collapse. Exact same from this intersection right here, make the crease go straight up. So fold this edge over to the left and align up these creases. So, like this. It's going to make a crease from this point straight up. it starts in this intersection right here. I think I will actually cut these parts where I'm colouring in the lines just to save time. And we have this. section right here. So we have this crease and this one. So now we can make this diagonal going through it. Because we can line up this edge, the centre line, we can fold it up and line it up until it starts the crease here. So let me show you. From this intersection I'm going to make crease goes straight across and we're going to fold it up and make sure the plane, the edge of the paper is on the line. I'm going to start it off like this. Okay, so we should. So like that. Not like that. Not like that. Like that. And then just make the crease. Now we have 
like that. Let's toss them there. And then that. Maybe we should have used a darker pen so you can see them easier. Hopefully you can see it fine. I'm not going too fast anyway, so it should be good. Now, what we can make next is, because we have made this crease, we now know where it lies on the bottom edge of the paper and for luck this crease starts off where this point meets the edge. So if we fold the left edge over and start a crease from right here going straight up. So right from this point. Just put the same on this side, just to try and keep it. Now we have that. Oh, got the chalk. And that. Now what we can make is, we can now make this purple crease because we have a few intersections all happening at this black circle. So if we, in fact we can't, we can't make it actually yet because we don't have this crease, the black crease, I forgot about that. So what we can do is take this edge and fold it to this edge and it's just the bisector. So if you fold this in half, and then just fold this edge to this edge, like that. And then we are just going to do the same again on this side. So just fold the paper over. So fold the paper over and align up with the crease underneath. And just take your time trying to be precise when you do this. The more precise you are, the easier things will be for later on. Then we have those two creases right there. Just repeating this crease and that crease here and here, and you should have this. Right, next ones are basically we can make two more from what the original references give us. And those are, oh, and I changed my pen because I have no idea I got covered in ink. That other pen is rubbish. Got ink all over the paper as well, so it doesn't look as neat. But we can make this crease right here simply by connecting this edge to this edge, which we'll do that now. So, straightforward crease from this point to this point. Let's see how 
this pen does. I have no idea how it curved the ink. Just my luck. So, look at that. And the final crease that we can make from the, these references are this one right here. So if we start a crease from this intersection and then fold this, this point up and align it with this edge until we start a crease here we can make this one. So let me show you. This is the intersection right here. If we fold this edge up, not straight, you want to make sure we first of all start a crease from this intersection, which we have, and then just align this edge, this crease, which is this one here, onto this crease. And again, always try and be neat. This is really off for me. Now I'm only going to colour in up to here because we don't actually need this last portion. Like that. And then you would do the exact same on this side. And hopefully when you do this things should start to line up. That's why it's important to have a perfect square so everything lines up as neat as possible. And then and this There we have this. Let me just close up if that helps. And then the end the crease plotter. Okay, so that is basically what the, uh, this reference has given us all of these lines. We can now make more to help uh, get the rest of the creases. So first of all we'll start up here, just at the top of the head. This crease right here is halfway between this point and this point. So just take this edge and fold to this edge. And then just repeat that once more. So we're half in the distance, basically, yeah, half in it and then half again. And then that made. So we have this, and that made this one and this one. So as you can see, you can half it again and again, but I will let you do that. Now we can fold the left edge over to this crease right here and we're just half in this in distance which will make this crease here out the frame there we go so we're taking the left edge 
and folding it to this crease. should intersect with this point right here. So let's colour in these ones. And the good thing when you do this is every time you, make, you basically add a crease it gets easier because you've got more to work with and then it should be not as bad. It's, it's tricky when you don't have as much to start with but the more you add the easier it gets. From this angle, there's two ways you can do this. You can make, you can bisect this angle, folding this edge onto this edge, and then making the halfway mark. Or you can fold this point up to this point because the distance from here to here is the exact same. So what I'll do is I'll do the bisector from this way. So I'm gonna hold it in the orientation. Yeah, in fact, because we don't have this crease yet, I just realised we can't do that, so we'll need to fold this point up to this point to make here. So you are taking this line and this line, where they meet, which is obviously lower on mine, but it will be where they intersect, you'll fold this point up to this point. So we're taking this intersection to this point here. And again, keep the lines lined up while we're at the to show. This is one of those tricky creases, so just take your time when you do it. So this point to this point. When you do that, this lines up, so that could be a bit of help. Again, try and keep it as straight. Sort like that. And then, what you can do is make it gentle first, and then have a look to make sure that this crease lies on top of each other. See how like that, you can see them on top of each other? Not like that, or like that. Make sure they're flat as possible, so take as long as you need to make that crease and then just, uh, what direction is it? Yes, that works. Like that. just made this crease and on the crease pattern that is this one right here. Now if we, no, in fact, now what we can do is 
Yeah, first of all, I'm going to do it on the other side so I don't forget. And we've done it just on the other side as well. So you we should have something like this. And then on the crease part. Right, so now because we already had this crease, and now we have this one that has made an intersection right here. Let me just extend this a wee bit. So where these two lines meet, if we do the exact same uh, way of making this crease, because we folded this edge up to line it up with this line, we started the crease from here. If we do the exact same and start it from here instead, we can get the exact parallel crease to this one here. So let me just extend this a wee bit. So right from here. It's going to be a bit tricky again. So I'm just going to start it off at the pinch mark. then you just want to adjust it. Right. Let me do it flat first. And I can see through the paper. So I've got the pinch here. I just want to make sure that crease is lining up. Which is. So this crease should lie on top of this one. And then once you've done that, make the crease to the centre. And then all the way to the edge. And then unfold. That gives us parallel crease. Oops, it's all zoomed in. exact same on this side so I'm going to do that and we have this and on the crease button and the crease does pass through this intersection as well just because I've not correctly coloured it in it doesn't look like it but it is passing through it on the crease button so that's another reference point you can help line up when you make this crease now what we can do is, if we look here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can divide this entire section into 8 parts, which is right here. So take this edge, or the other one, whichever one you prefer. And just line up with this crease. Then make it to the center because that will help us make these creases in here, which I won't show those ones. I'll let you just figure those out. And then stay on this side. So we've halved once, now you're just going to half again and then again to have eight sections here and eight and you should have something like this. So we have just divided this part into eight and then this part into eight. That's the left hand side. And then the right. And 
then on the crease pattern, we have done all those. Now, what we can do is we can just make this crease right here and this crease right here. So, from this point to this point. So just like that. And then on the crease part. Now for this section right here, this crease mirrors these two sections. So normally this would be eight, then this would be eight, but because we have obviously uh, we don't have enough paper to fully make these divisions, then it looks different sizes, but it is originally eight. So what we can do is, we can make two. Don't have it. Shoots this way. So if we make the bisector of this crease to this one here, and then where that meets this edge, this crease, we can make the line all the way down, and then divide the right-hand side section into four. And then the left hand side into two and then when you do that they should all meet down here so first of all we'll do that so we're taking this edge and folding it onto this edge I think I'll use pencil next time. I'm cordoning. Anyway, we have done that. Let me just quickly colour this in. We have made this crease. And then this one on this crease part. So now we can make a crease going all the way down, this one here, the blue one, the second one in, starting from this point. So starting from this crease. And then again, be as accurate as possible. It's one of those annoying pieces that you'll probably need to use a raw to make sure it's the same distance going all the way down. So, oops, that was a bit. Yeah, right, let's go to that first. So like that. So it starts from there and then goes all the way down. Now we can divide this section into four and then this one just in half. I am definitely using pencil next time. I'm covered in ink again. Now this crease here doesn't line up with the halfway crease so don't get confused with that thinking it's halfway. It's slightly off to the side. And 
on the crease part. The final crease that I am going to show is this one right here. There's two ways to do it. You can either where these lines intersect, basically connect the dots and then make the crease, or to make it easier, this crease. Use this for example. So it's cleaner, so it's easier to show in this one. We have this one right here, and then this crease we already have. So it's just the bisector of these two. So if I make this now and fold. And then fold it like that. That creates that crease, so it's very much easier to do it like that than connecting up the dots. So just like that. So that is the top one. And then this one here. make the crease and if all goes well it should intersect all these points and then that's how you know you've got it correct. Mine doesn't but yours will because yours will be much neater than mine. Oh boy, that's even worse. Creases made. So, if you manage to get this far, then congratulations, you are now able to make the rest of the creases from these ones. These are bisectors from this edge to this edge. Basically how you make the, the little spikes on the quarter crease patterns. These are all, pardon me, bisectors and 22.5 creases. The same with the head, the same here. You'll be good, I don't need to show you any more of it, I know you can do it. And for the collapsing, I will be doing a collapsing tutorial but I've not decided on the paper. So in the meantime I've done this so it's already out. You can all start to pre-crease it, get it all ready and then once I make the, the actual paper I'll use, I'll get it pre-creased and then we'll do the collapsing.